So data was collected for a sample of 1,000 pregnancies in 2015. The data is contained in the spreadsheet for download. So past records indicate that in 2004, average birth weight was 3,500 grams, and we need to test at 5% if the average birth weight has increased compared to 2004. So what we've got here is our population. And we have drawn a sample from that population and it's got 1,000 pregnancies in it. So that means that the size of the sample, which is called n, is equal to 1,000. Now we're going to assume that the population um, has a birth weight of 3,500 grams, okay, as an average, I should mention as well. So that's going to be equal to mu. Now we haven't been told what the standard deviation of that um, population is. So that's going to be, um, I guess the trigger for us to perform a t-test as opposed to a z-test. So if we were given what the standard deviation was, then we would go down the z-test route. But since we haven't, t-test it is. All right, so let's set up our hypotheses. So HO, that's the null hypothesis or the um, hypothesis of no change or maintaining the status quo. So for our case, um, we're looking at the average birth weight between 2004 and 2015. So my HO here is going to basically be that there is no change. So the mean birth weight in 2004 is the same as what it is in 2015. And if I put a number to it, it's going to be that the mean is actually that 3,500 grams. So the H1, the alternate hypothesis, that's going to be kind of the interesting thing we're looking at. So we want to know if the average birth weight has increased compared to 2004. So H1 will be that the mean increased. And if we write that with maths, it's going to be that mu is bigger than the 3500. All right, so the next thing I'm going to note is the level of significance that we've been given as 5%. So we should be able to write um, a bit of a rule um, as to whether we would accept or reject our null hypothesis um, based on this 5% level of significance. Remember that you can call this 5% alpha as well for level of significance. So noting that alpha is equal to 5%, we're using the p-value approach. So that means that if the p-value is less than the level of significance, then we are going to reject HO. So that means that we say there is evidence that the mean has increased. So the opposite case is where the p-value is more than alpha. If that happens, we're going to accept HO. So we're going to say that there is um, yeah, no evidence to say that the mean has increased, i.e. the mean is unchanged. All right, so now we need to get into actually performing the test. So at the moment, we haven't really looked at our sample um, stuff at all. But what we're going to need to get out of it in a moment is x bar, which is the mean of the sample um, observations, and we're also going to need the standard deviation of our sample, which I'll call s. So let's go get them from Excel. So this is the spreadsheet. Remember we're interested in birth weight, which is kind of this last column here. So if I want x bar, that's the average of all of my observations. So this one all the way down to the end. If you hold shift, it will highlight all the ones in between and hit enter. So we've got um, X bar being 3540 grams. And the other thing I said I wanted was the sample standard deviation. So I should be able to get that using an Excel formula as well. Hit equals. So we've got a couple of options um, for standard deviations. Um, the one with dot p, that's for if you're looking at a population. If you want dot s, that's for looking at a sample. So we're looking at a sample, that's what we want. So highlighting again all of the data. So we end up with our sample standard deviation being about 543. So let's go back and mark that in. So we had 3540. And this one was about 543. All right, so now we're kind of up to the part where we want to start drawing some diagrams. So we know if our population here is normally distributed, which we are assuming, all right, 
Then X bar, which is the sample mean, um, that should also be normal as well. So a normal distribution, it can be described with the mean and the standard deviation. So mu X bar, the mean of X bar, that should be equal just directly to mu, which is our population's mean. The other thing we said we needed oh, was standard deviation, but it's not going to be sigma because we haven't been told that about the population. So we can't use it to calculate. So instead, we're going to have to use S X bar um, as our stand-in. So this is going to be the standard deviation of the um, sample mean, calculated as S over square root n. So now that I've just gone through and found what s is, we can pop that in. So 543 divided by 1000 square rooted. And this works out to about 17.2 for yeah the standard deviation of our sample mean. All right, so let's draw that. So if this is x bar to begin with, we know it's distributed around mu x bar. All right, I can even mark in the number for that. I should probably do that. So we're saying 3,500. And the standard deviation here, sorry, it's S, is the 17.2. All right, so what we are going to need to test for is that the mean has increased. And we're going to be looking at the mean of our sample, which we calculated to be 3540. So we want to know the probability of this happening or something more extreme. So jumping back down here, so let's say it's here, 3540. So we want to drop a line here where we've got our actual event. And then something more extreme happening is going to be on the right hand side here. So what we need to figure out is, yeah, the probability that lies within this region. So in order to do that, we're going to need to convert ourselves into the T um, scale instead. So we have our equation for converting between them, and that is that T is equal to X bar minus mu X bar divided by S X bar. So our X bar value is this 3540. Mu X bar is the 3500 and S X bar we calculated to be the 17.2. So if you put that in a calculator, it comes out to 2.35. So that is here on our scale. And remember when you go to a T, your mean always goes to zero as well. All right, so our P value is going to be equal to the probability that x bar is greater than 3540 because that represents this region and it's equivalent to saying that t all right is greater than the 2.35 so the only other piece of information we need to be able to work this out is the number of degrees of freedom in our system so this is equal to n minus 1, where n is the number in your sample. So in our case, it's 1000 minus 1, or 999. So based off this number of degrees of freedom and this probability expression, we should be able to get Excel to calculate for us this um, p-value. All right, so jumping over to Excel. So it's going to be equals. And if we type in t, it brings up um, a heap of different options. So this one here returns the left-tailed student's t-distribution. This one underneath it with the RT on the end returns the right-tailed. And this is what we um, actually want because you can see that we have the right tail up here. The other option was um, in here, two-tail. That's where we have two different segments that we want to calculate um, within our graph. But obviously we don't have that. So we're going to go with this one. X here is the value of um, T that you want to test. So ours is the 2.35. And then the number of degrees of freedom we said was 999. So this is the p-value that we get returned. So 0 0.0095 we'll say. 
So that's that. And if we convert it to a percentage, it would be the same as 0.95%. So there's about a 1% chance here um, that we would get this result of 3540 as our sample mean or more extreme um, based on the assumption that we have a normal distribution with a mean of 3500. So we now just need to compare this to our stuff up here. So alpha was equal to 5%, and if we look at these two options that we have, um, we're going to actually fit into this top one. So we got about 0.94%, which is definitely less than alpha of 5%. So that's telling us that the conclusion should be to reject the null hypothesis, and that was of course that the mean was unchanged. So instead, it's telling us that we have evidence that the mean has increased, which is our alternate hypothesis. So evidence to say mean birth weight has increased. And I could probably even put in here strong evidence because it's quite a difference between about 1% and 5%. So that there would be the conclusion to my question. So that's pretty much all there is for this video and I'll see you in another one.